No, no, they always come. That's right. Here they come. going that way will be in Brisbane in two minutes flat. Top speed 2400 kilometres per hour. Simply incredible. The dump and burn from the F111. Tegan Rogers with the national anthems and father Phil DeRay with the invocation. Setting the scene for us to go racing in the Nikon Indy 300. Which way is he going to go past us? Right over the top, I'd say. Right. Look at that. Oh. <laughs> just, just shoot, Mike. Yeah, it's like a motor drive on it. <laughs> oh, oh yes! Fucking smash the windows and everything, Jesus oh, Christ! Fuck it!
I told you, Jay. He thought it was coming. Where is that guy saying? Oh, my The F-111 is a masterpiece of jet bomber design, first flown in the 1960s. It still holds records for high-speed, low-level bombing. By sweeping its wings back in flight, the F-111 hits 3,000 kilometers an hour. It can carry 14 tons of bombs, more than half its own weight, to targets more than 2,000 kilometers away. Onboard radar scans the terrain allowing high-speed attack from 50 metres above the ground, beneath enemy radar. The F-111 can dump and ignite fuel with the afterburners. The spectacular display can light up a city. For many aircrew, flying the F-111 is a career highlight. But these extreme war machines can be fickle. And sometimes things go wrong in the air. March 2006. An F-111 loses a wheel on takeoff. On board are pilot Peter Komar and air combat officer Luke Warner. Uh, we double checked with air traffic. They informed us, unfortunately, that it was the entire wheel. Uh, including the whole uh, rim, the brake mechanism, everything. So the left-hand side, all we had was a stub. With no landing gear, surviving this flight will need much more than good luck. With the stricken jet circling the airbase, 
F-111 pilots at squadron headquarters scramble to devise a plan to save the crew and the aircraft. We've set ourselves up in this area around here. We've got 12 people directly working to help this crew get down. Our first job is to look at the flight manual, figure out what it tells us to do with this particular emergency. As we've gone through the flight manual, it's very quickly become evident that at no stage in the past has an F-111 had a main wheel detach itself from the airframe. We're in no man's land. To make things worse, the young pilot has landed an F-111 only a handful of times. It does invoke some fear, most definitely. I think uh, anybody in that position would have, uh, would have gone through the emotions that both uh, Luke, and, Luke and myself did. While we're doing this, in the background, we knew of the existence of a three-quarter inch pneumatic tape of a United States Air Force aircraft landing without its main wheels. The guys over at Tech Training Flight burnt that onto a CD for us, so we now had some pictures, some idea, of how to land an aeroplane, at least without the main wheels. Ejecting from the plane is ruled out. It's always the last resort. The decision to go for a belly landing without wheels. We then proceeded to have a couple of goes without the hook down, so just low flying right on top of the runway there, trying to get as low as we can to get a feel for it. We needed to get down around the sort of 10 or 11, uh, preferably maybe seven or six feet. Uh, finally, we decided that we'd, we'd we're down to a position now where we need to have a go with the, the hook down. The F-111 has a retractable hook under its tail, which grabs a brake line on the runway if a high-speed takeoff is aborted. Maybe the hook will slow down the incoming jet. We didn't get low enough on that first one and uh, it's set up again for another go. We actually felt the cable dragging in the dirt. We could actually feel it make contact. We'd uh, skidded to a halt. We knew we had to get away from the jet because obviously there's a risk of fire. There's plenty of metal in contact with the runway. We had about 3,000 litres of fuel, uh, which is pretty explosive. Potential of that catching on fire. Absolutely stoked and, uh, and wrapped to have pretty much walked away from the situation with, with not a scratch. So, yeah, very, very, very happy. At the end of the day, one of the most inexperienced F-111 pilots made a copybook ending of an abnormal situation that nobody had ever seen before. That in itself is absolute proof that our training, the people we've got in place, are spot on. A peacetime emergency becomes one more team training drill.
Our retired F-111s are being buried at Nipswich Landfill, the final chapter for a decorated and much-loved jet. 10 reporter Leonie Mello has more. We saw many farewells to the F-111s, affectionately known as the Pick, but today it is the final one. 23 of the aircraft are being buried here at Swan Bank after 37 years of service. The planes have all been demilitarised. 13 planes are being kept. They're going on loan to various RSLs and museums. But Defence said it had to get rid of the remainder under an agreement, an international agreement with the US where it purchased these planes from. Now you're probably asking uh, why didn't they sink them or use them for dive sites. Defence said it did look at several options but the aircraft panels contained bound asbestos. Recycling was another option but it was double the cost. So the decision to bury them here, the safest and cheapest option. But I guess uh, many aircraft enthusiasts are still asking saying, gee, what a shame after such a decorated history, 37 years of service. And of course people in Brisbane know them most famously for their dump and burns during river fire. But here at Swan Bank, their final resting place for 23 of the F-111 fleet.